please welcome up to the front of the theater, Jonathan Gold. So we're going to have to share a microphone. I hope you don't mind. Question on everyone's mind right now, I'm sure. Where is the best udon in Los Angeles? <laughs> in Gardena, at a place called Kotohira, uh, which <laughs> which makes noodles exactly in the style described and shown so many hundreds of times in the film. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in, in one of the many, many noodle montages, there were actually people wearing Koto Hero shirts that were walking through. I think it was probably a school or something, but good udon. If, for example, there's been a family that's been making a particular noodle for a hundred years, I'd want to know about that and I'd, and I'd write about it and something... You can feel it. You can feel, as in the movie a little bit, I guess, the, the soul of the family, the soul of the generations coming through a particular kind of food or a particular kind of, you know, n noodle, that's, noodle that's being made. There's just that sort of what's muscular memory could also be extrapolated into being something greater than that, I think. I suffer from a psychological disorder that I don't remember the uh, names of people I've met the previous day, but I remember soup that I had 20 years ago and whether it was garnished with parsley or chervil. And, you know, there's, food, food has that remarkable thing. You, you, you smell a certain pungence of scallions, for example, against a certain sort of, you know, f fishiness coming from a broth. And you're, you're eating the soup that's in front of you, but it also, you, you know, br it brings up, it, it sort of brings back memories of a, of a soup or a bowl of something that you may have had 25 years ago. And not just the bowl of soup, but everything that was happening when you had the bowl of soup and, and, the, and the person you were with and, you know, you know, the fact of new love and the fact that there was a really big stain in the ceiling. I mean, all of it. I, I, think, I think food and the taste of food have the power and the magic to be un to unlock huge areas of the brain. No, it, it was funny when uh, when uh, David Anson, the director of the festival, asked me to do this and asked me to figure out a food movie. And my first choice was actually che Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. <laughs> Which, um, I, I love the original, but Texas Chainsaw 2 is one of the best bad movies ever made. And, you know, the, you know, Leatherface and the gang are selling Texas chili at a fair. And, and, and there's a wonderful scene when somebody bites into a finger bone and uh, <laughs> reaches, takes it back and says, hard shell peppercorn, that was. <laughs> There's there's a lot of good cannibalism movies out there, but <laughs> actually, probably more cannibalism movies than there are actual food movies, which is odd. And mo and most of them are better. You'd probably rather watch the Cook, the Thief, the Wife, and Her Love than you would uh, Babette's Feast, or at least I would. <laughs> the food even looks better. <laughs> <laughs>